Did you know that black holes explode immediately? That is, from a certain internal point of view. Hello, I'm Todd, and this is Astronex. Today's topic, Black Hole Powered Warp Drive Starship. It has long been theorized that black holes of stellar mass form from extreme gravitational compressions of matter, such as when extremely massive stars collapse at the end of their life cycles. But once formed, they're able to grow in size simply by drawing in and absorbing surrounding mass and energy, such as light. And if a black hole consumes enough matter or merges with other black holes, a supermassive black hole forms, the largest of their kind, measured in millions to thousands of millions of solar masses, generally considered to exist at the center of most if not all galaxies. When we look at the center of our galaxy, we don't actually see any black holes. That's because by virtue of their nature, a black hole is, well, black, since light cannot escape. They're only made visible through their interactions with surrounding matter and energy. What we see are the stars orbiting a central void, if you will. When matter falls into a black hole, this can form an accretion disk, which is then superheated by means of extreme friction, creating some of the brightest and perhaps most spectacular objects in the cosmos. Black holes are also able to shrink. The late Dr. Stephen Hawking theorized that due to extremely intense local gravitational fields near the outer event horizon, so-called virtual particles become actual or real particles, some of which are then pulled in whilst others are able to radiate away, giving rise to what we call Hawking radiation, also known as black hole evaporation. Since the process of converting virtual particles into actual particles requires gravitational energy from the black hole, when some of these particles escape, they take with them the energy consumed in their formation. Hence, the black hole shrinks due to a loss of mass energy. It's amazing how much science we knew in the 18th century. It's amazing how much science we know now. And yet, science is about to realize just how much they have to learn about space-time. Next up, creating and extracting energy from synthetic black holes. But first, the prerequisites. There is a relatively recent theory known as the Planck star theory, derived from loop quantum gravity, in which gravity and space-time are quantized, a topic for another video. It was developed to solve an outstanding problem with our understanding of black holes. You see, according to Einstein's unmodified relativity, when matter or energy falls into a black hole, all of its properties, its nature, everything about the infalling stuff is lost as a black hole is described by only three properties, its mass, electromagnetic charge, and angular momentum. However, this violates the principle of conservation of information that states all information must be conserved. When two or more entities merge, they share properties or information. One affects the other, hence the outstanding problem. Somehow there must be a mechanism by which information is conserved. This then raises the question, how is information conferred conserved? What is the mechanism by which information is conferred to another entity? Whatever exactly the information is. Therefore, the Planck star theory solves both the problem of information loss and the problem of infinite density at the black hole's singularity. The theory basically states that when a black hole forms, as matter and energy compresses ever further, at the very moment the core reaches critical density, specifically the Planck energy density, a repulsive opposing force from within the core preventing the black hole, all of its mass and energy, 
from reaching the Planck scale, halting its collapse. Now, all black holes would instantly explode if it were not for the gravitational time dilation induced by the extremely strong field, which slows time so much that a black hole may exist for literally billions of years, that is, from our external perspective. From the black hole's perspective, its point of view, nothing has changed. Its mass and energy gets compressed and explodes immediately. Think about it. Extremely powerful gravitational fields actually slows time. It's akin to a time machine, albeit one measured in millions of solar masses, and not one you would want to stand next to. You wouldn't want to, would you? Time dilation is perhaps more common than you are aware. To a smaller yet detectable degree, Objects resting on the surface of the Earth experience a slower rate of time relative to objects orbiting the Earth, which experience a faster rate of time. Not to get too far from the subject matter at hand, the gravitational field inside a black hole is so strong that not even light, which of course travels at the speed of light, can escape it. Therefore, this raises the question, what is this repulsive force? How could it escape when light cannot? Does this imply that the force must have something to do with traveling faster than light and repelling gravity? The only force capable of opposing such powerful gravitational fields are faster than light particles, known as tachyons, which possess properties of negative energy. The word Tachyon means a faster-than-light particle. Tachyons are theoretical particles with negative imaginary mass, whose speed is always greater than that of light. Negative energy works like this. The more force you apply to tachyons, the greater those tachyons resist you, until such time as when they overwhelm your applied force, accelerating away faster than light. And yes, since tachyons also push back against gravity, this means that it is also a form of anti-gravity. Many scientists are skeptical that tachyons exist at all. Why? Because this would overturn our notion of causality and would imply that there exists another kind of matter, smaller and finer than the so-called elementary particles. Paragravity, anti-gravity, repulsor, repulsor lift, repulsor pads. <coughs> oh, excuse me, <laughs> just daydreaming about the future again. This concept is in part of our own design. Whilst the idea itself may not be complete, the basis of the concept is worthy of discussion, such as the reason for this video. Now, as you know, the basis of our concept is founded in the use of negative energy which is repulsive by virtue of its properties, used here to warp local space-time surrounding a starship in a similar way as does al Kabir's original idea, by enveloping the starship with an asymmetrical bubble of intense negative energy, or in other words, faster-than-light particles, generically known as tachyons. Moving along, the hardware. Surrounding the equatorial region of the starship is a torus, a thick ring, housing multiple black hole reactors. Each reactor consists of double-walled shell with an externally mounted array of gamma ray lasers, while inside are both paragravitic and electromagnetic coils. For more information on paragravity, see our video Relativistic Gravity. The space between the shell walls is filled with a high-pressure gas and perforated with multiple outlets through the inner wall venting into the reaction chamber. When the gas enters, it's ionized and pushed towards the center by the coils. As the black hole, formed by the powerful lasers, explodes, the released energy superheats the now plasma and compresses it against the coils until the density is great enough to absorb even the high-energy gamma rays. 
At the same time, this allows energy to be extracted and permits some degree of control over the also released tachyons. When tachyons pass through and interact with matter, and in this case the plasma, they don't slow as they lose energy, instead they accelerate. By setting up a bias in the plasma sheath, where it is slightly denser in the opposite desired direction of travel, the tachyons traveling in that direction will accelerate more quickly. Though the tachyons are emitted radially, the slight asymmetry produces a much greater thrust in the appropriate direction. What we've designed here is essentially a tachyon rocket. This tachyon rocket would produce an enormous acceleration, causing the ship to jump or tunnel through the light speed barrier, crossing many light years in an instant. If you haven't already, watch our video, The Musha Jump Drive, where we discuss the process in more detail. Does this mean we're ready to make use of tachyons? Yes and no. Whilst we may know how to create a warp drive equipped starship, the necessary hardware is still several years away. As far as whether tachyons actually exist or not, well, let me put it this way. Let us see what is discovered within the next five years. When might we have such warp or even jump drive starships? Based on what we know, my guesstimation would put it around around about the 2070s time frame. That said, we might still have slow FTL starships before then, say 2050s, 2060s. Slow meaning at or just above light speed, not much higher. What I can tell you is this. We will most likely have paragravity STL starships by the 2030s, 40s, which will serve a vital role in ferrying folks to and from other worlds, I'm sure. It could take place in the form of some sort of space plane where folks are shuttled up to a waiting station or craft before being transported to the main craft and then onto Mars, for example. So there you have it. That's my educated assessment of the future. Now you basically know how to build a black hole powered warp drive starship. Ready for space travel, are you? Want to play a role in future space travels? Leave your comments below. If you like this video, like it. If not, oh well. If you want to learn more about cutting edge technologies, support our work, videos and research, by heading over to Patreon, one dollar, one pound, one yen, one euro, etc. will eventually add up. At one dollar, all we need are a few thousand. Also, be sure to participate in our light conversation at our community tab. If you have any questions, requests, suggestions, etc., you can contact us via our YouTube About page or our website, astronx.com, where we are adding new content when and where we can. I would like to thank everyone for watching. Thank you. Until next time, keep wondering about space.